strong merit based um, he, he is there but he, he is finishing he's he is uh, doing well academically he is using a scribe uh, etc but and he has an aspiration he's he, he's all um, into wanting to become a um, banker and financial uh, you know pursue a career in finance etc and wants to enter into a multinational bank etc but had no computer skills so we visited why do you don't have uh, why, how, he says i i always use a scribe so but uh, so no no use of technology extremely bright so we had to that lack of early intervention at the college at the school level if he has got we had to actually step in there luckily we were working with this college here so the second year we put a tutor who could uh, engage with this person teach um, you know use of jaws first of all he there was a resistance why should i learn jaws you know then I, we put a put a peer counselor and said if, if you get to learn um, jaws and uh, peer if you learn um, you know uh, that's where you get independent your job prospects your employment prospects increases many fold once you start um, having access to technology so and then that motivated the hearing from a uh, hearing from a, a, another blind person who has made it uh, uh, made it uh, you know into the into getting into the corporate sector motivated the individual and he took up the took up the program and then finally um, you know he got he went through very well in the internship and has got a full time job in a very strong mnc if this was not there and uh, if for example luckily this program was there but we don't know how many of them do not have what happens you finish graduation and to learn uh, and become very accompli uh, accomplished with uh, with using um, jaws and using technology it takes 6 months to almost a year but i i have to start earning i have to keep my i can't keep studying i've already studied uh, 5 years and now again means after uh, 12 uh, if, there's a huge pressure for me to earn so all of that is is a challenge with uh, with with which a person with disability faces incrementally uh, over others similarly on training lack of trainers capacity is less um, uh, uh, you, you number of people classrooms are smaller um, number of training institutions are less you know uh, which significantly less then huge uh, problems with accessibility not every, uh, there's no uh, um, accessible learning spaces available it's using universal design and udl methods for uh, access of, uh, of uh, teaching is just not there uh, books and kits in uh, various places not available in uh, all technology uh, accessible tools not available then again industry linkages awareness of inter industry linkages not there okay so there is an additional complexity when we talk about um, um, skilling for persons with disabilities you know one is their affordability is a challenge you know you more uh, there is a strong uh, a connection between income levels and, and poverty among um, poverty for persons with you if you're more likely to have lesser income if you're a poor person then social exclusion you all know and the population is scattered so aggregating is a challenge if run a classroom want to provide all of this uh, for a bit for a work with the deaf people I can, it's difficult to uh, aggregate they're all you know in, we work with the um, engineering colleges i get two two students in a batch but I work only. We work as Vishesh. We work only for placement of uh, uh, persons with disabilities. Company says, oh, with two, it's. I, I, I mean, if I want to show it to a manager, so I need to at least have ten profiles. But with one college, I get two. So I have to ag start aggregating at you know going deep, and that increases the cost uh, uh, from a delivery standpoint. Um, so and all of these are major major challenges. Then of course accommodation. Uh, Diversity needs um, not met, etc., are another another set of challenges that increases the complexity. I've tried to relay the map that we talked about um, uh, earlier about a person with disability. Uh, it should not. Please read it as if you're born with. If you're born with, if you're a poor person, you have ninety percent of a fifteen to twenty percent chance of getting a uh, a good income. Eighty percent chance of. Um, uh, you are likely to remain in poverty. In persons with disabilities, the situation is worse than that of uh, being born in a poor family. 
30%, even today, 30% have do not have access to uh, education about inclusive education, et cetera, in other uh, courses that we have. Again, same dropout, only five to 10% actually complete school. Uh, very few have access. Mainstream learning our higher education um, hardly accessible. So six to eight percent. So we are we end up with only uh, only five to ten percent actually having um, decent salaries compared to so poorer than what poorer communities are. So you can it's very clear the barriers are all stacking up against. Uh, uh, income and equal opportunity access for in skilling and employment purposes. Okay. okay. Now, what are the emerging models um, uh, for to come out of? You know, what what is the spark? We don't have solutions for everything, but there are some some models um, uh, that can work in a skilling persons with disabilities. So I will stop here, and I would like to ask this question: uh, Do would you have any of you have any suggestions of what could these models be? For, for skilling of persons with disabilities, where the challenge is uh, skill deficit is even higher, um, accessibility is a challenge, accessibility of training institutions, mainstream training institutions is a challenge. Employer is also not sensitized, and the employer also has a hesitation to hire. So, given these this kind of um, complication, what could what are the models that will work? Anybody? Any whatever comes to your mind for skilling. If I have to, if you were to start a skilling um, institution for persons with disabilities to cater to the needs of a person, or, or working with an existing institution, saying, oh, you also include disability. What more? Friends, whatever comes to your mind, whatever comes to your mind, I know it's a slightly deeper uh, topic, maybe a little technical, but please share your thoughts. Hello. Yes, yes, please. Thank you. Um, I was thinking maybe uh, using technology uh, where we might have recorded lectures, we might have modules which can be accessed from different places so that rather than having one single individual uh, training uh, a group of students, we can have a sort of diffuse type of learning where a student can learn uh, in, an, uh, in an environment where he, they don't have to travel maybe or maybe a smartphone is provided to them and they can use that as a tool. Good. So you are talking about an academy, a Coursera, or a kind of a model section, a self-paced yes. model. Yes. Uh, yes. You can learn. Uh, yes. Content is made as accessible as it is. Uh, and um, so people can join at their own convenient time and learn. Okay, great. So, that will that means the uh, cost of transportation, travel, accommodation, all of that is addressed. Okay, great, great Saksham. Um, anybody else? What do you think, Saksham's um, suggestion? What are the good things about it, and what what are the challenges with such a model? One challenge I think personally would be the cost of the devices and internet access. Yes, that would be a limiting factor for people yes. to join the training. Okay, got it. Yes. So you, there is a certain number of people without that access. I think internet access itself can be resolved because it's a function of money with, you know, and it's a variable cost. Whereas a, uh, access to a device is always a higher challenge to address because it costs more to own a laptop. Um, and uh, and also transfer of, of uh, and, um, uh, for, for, I mean, I can't give, it's very difficult to give it on loan and lease and uh, that kind of arrangements are very limited. Yes. Anything else? 
which uh, succumbs model. Yeah. Uh, Puja, practical skill knowledge miss, it gets missed. Can you elaborate on that, Puja? Yeah, I mean, um, so uh, regarding the lectures and explaining of the things, I think uh, this would be fine, like uh, online education and all. But then uh, if, if the jobs are such where uh, like physical presence is there or, uh, you know, doing it with your own uh, uh, self, etc. I mean, in that case, the, that um, personalized experience is missing. That's Correct. what I'm saying. So. Got it. So two things I think you bought. I think two points actually you said. One is the, the uh, practical experience of explaining how um, you know, the machine works, the hands-on stuff, very difficult. You know, if I have to say mechatronics is, is, is how does, it's a technical course on how to design uh, machines to make a machine work. So that one has to really physically do something. That, can very very will be very difficult to fully fully simulate in a um, in the um, in a, an online e-learning uh, self-paced model. Um, other one which actually is equally important is uh, what we have also experienced uh, is in our work is you know you really some of them you really need not some kind of a guidance and uh, if people are motivated self motivated to learn. Um, they can, they would have found Google, there is infinite amount of resources they will learn. Um, if, uh, if they are, even though the motivation may be there to learn and get a job, but just the sheer magnitude of finding it, um, sheer magnitude of having done this repeated courses over and over again, it tires individuals and tires the person with disability even more. Huh? Sometimes we mistake that as the person does not have the motivation. Uh, the person is lazy, attitude is not poor, but it's not that. The person has done this training many, many times over. So we have to give that facilitation. What I'm saying is support and facilitation. That, you know, left alone um, um, to structure the model, alone e-learning may not work. You may need at least a connect class once a week without clearance class. Sometimes, the person is not taking, we have to push, say, why are you not able to take this? This is so important. Unless you get, get skill, your wages are not going to improve. You're, you cannot crack the interview. It's just another two months. You know, that kind of exchange and support and facilitation is still, still critical. You know, and uh, in that model, it does not still happen. But digital, if I, um, I can marry what Saksham said, have a have e-learning course and we have uh, we facilitate um, uh, an, an instructor make it what we call which is popularly it's getting very very popular which is called the blended model you know so there is an instructor there is a there is there is e-learning self-paced model both of them work together in a virtual setup which is through um, uh, zoom like we like the way we are talking today exactly the same that can to some extent, um, you know, make it make overcome some of the challenges. For um, for very good. Thanks for bringing that uh, that up, uh, Saksham. It is not there in in the emerging model that I I presented. Uh, but still, uh, the gap we still remain. What do we do with people who do not have computers? Huge. Uh, we we are running training programs for graduates and uh, for banking. Fifty percent of the people we are not able to train because they don't have because it doesn't make sense to train without a computer because at the end of the day, the jobs that we are going requires extensive work on a computer. I can do the training to meet the numbers, but it's not fair. You know, we are just wasting the person's time. We know that the person will get the certificate, but will never get a job. Okay? Uh, Shubham, you said learner to learner interaction. Peer interaction gets very limited in an in a e-learning setup. Yes, absolutely. Shubham. So, but you, but in, so end of the day, these all models have to be tried, tested, married, the best parts of each model. So uh, it has, everyone has, every model has its own advantages, disadvantages. We look at how um, those can be married. Okay. 
I will I will just take it a little bit. Uh, you know, these are very deeper. This this conversation was great, very deep level of understanding. I'll take it one step even at a higher level to understand what happens in the context of a job seeker. I'm talking job seeker with a person, a person who is a person with disability. There is I'm, definitely the skill gap is bigger um, because uh, among persons with disabilities, our schools are. It's a word. A person sorry. with disability. Persons with disability, yeah. Something was er earlier. Is it job seeker? Job seeker. Jobs. Job seekers, yeah. Job seeker with a disability. I'm talking that their employability skill is uh, um, even the gap is bigger, and uh, training avenues are limited. So they are like we discussed earlier. Your skill is low. The wage is going to be low. Um, naturally. Um, you are into lower paid jobs. Naturally, the disability bias is going to increase. You know, if you are not earning, again, the society looks uh, at it. And so it's a problem of the society. This is the context. How do we reverse this? The only only way to reverse this to you know increase the uh, we'll see some of the models to increase the skill quotient, access to skill for an individual. Okay? From the employer side, we look at the employer. Employer is wanting skilled people, you know, there is um, understanding is limited, there is um, bias is there, and thinking where is the talent, I'm opening, I'm ready to hire, but nobody I'm finding, a uh, skilled person is not there. When I hire two, in, uh, when I interview two people, the person with disability, I find that the, the skill level is not, not there to meet my requirement, so and further become biased. They, he, they, the employer does not think this is the problem of the ecosystem, it's not a problem of of the person with disability. The person with disability did not have access to the same uh, kind of uh, vocational training and schooling uh, privileges that a non-disabled person has. That all does not come occur to the employer. Okay? So they just move away from it. So how some of the models that has worked better is, one is called a train and hire model. I will talk a little bit deeper about it. And an internship or an apprentice model. The train and hire model we have done several of this in IT and banking retail sector, the internship model, uh, apprenticeship, again, we've done were even more difficult, um, um, uh, less convention, less uh, disabilities, we have been able to work around in manufacturing companies, uh, in, a, in a very high, I mean, IT design company we have been able to do. I'll talk a little bit more about uh, these uh, challenges. Okay. Current, uh, how does current uh, hiring model happen? You People hire, based on certain skill and then uh, on, they say okay basic qualification is this i train the person for that skill and then deploy okay um this is great when talent pipeline is large and you know that the skill um, criteria is largely met you know if, it, if the person does not after the training the person does not meet you fire the person it moves on there's constant churn you know you have uh, if you see in the IT sector, the first 10, 10 uh, among for zero to three years, is 10, 15, 20% people anyway leave. So this model perfectly works in the, in the regular hiring scheme, but it does not work in case of course, the disabled talent pool because the talent pool is limited. Skill, will, uh, skill may not be there and you do not give the right amount of, you're not patient enough to wait for the person's skill and talent to be expressed at the workplace. Uh, and you, you might give up on that. So, and in, in fact, before giving the job itself, you, you are uh, uh, eliminating because of other um, entrance tests, et cetera, which we discussed yesterday. You know, a lot of tests are there. Uh, GD group discussion is there, which may not be needed for the job. You still remove, keep up all of that. So two, Again, like just the cost of um, it's a repetition only of the two models, twin track model, two types of approaches can be taken. I am calling it twin track because one track, people who have finished graduation use, we use something called a train and hire model. I'll talk, we'll talk a little bit about what is a train and hire model. People who are in colleges, campuses use internship or uh, apprenticeship model because they are in the campus, go there, uh, be, strike, meet them early, address what are the skill gaps, um, have that longer stretch, two years, three years to meet, close that skill gap so that when they enter the, finish the graduation, they are more ready for the job market. Okay? So 
I will take some case studies, you know, to explain these two models a uh, little bit more in detail. What is train and hire model? This basic requirement is understood from the employer. Usually what happens, employer hires um, and then puts them, so a person, it's called DTH or direct to hire model. Hires, then puts, uh, I hire uh, commerce graduates. I put, run a training program on banking. You know, specific. This is what is required for my banking courses. I run that training, and then it, and then the person goes to production. And if the performance is not good, uh, the, uh, the, the the person moves out. The performance is good, the person goes. Okay. Um, that is the conventional model. But what, this is a flip model. How how does this work? Is uh, first screen the employers mobilizes we, uh, 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 an agency like Vishesh or anybody, the training provider screens uh, the, the individual. Sorry, I, I can hear some voice here. I'd request everyone to please go on mute. Alokita, can you please mute yourself? Yeah. So train and hire model works on this premise. So understand the requirement from the employer, very basic skills. I need to operate a computer. I need to type at the speed. Uh, I need to uh, at least be able to read English if I can't speak English, things like that. You know, understand that and have the employer screen uh, the group saying, okay, they are, they are trainable. They are not, they, I'm not ready to employ them, but yes, they are almost there. If, they, if their skill on working on Excel, understanding basic English, if these two are improved, we can really hire them, okay? So first step is to screen and then design with the employer, design a customized training module, one, two, three months. It used to be one, one to two months when we were doing physical training, now it is about two to three months. And then the pre-selected employers go through a structured training program. After the training program is completed, uh, they go through a test, you know, employers have their own tests. You know, the, you meet this uh, um, test, which is which is a performance or interview test or whatever. And then, if they meet those criteria, they get absorbed. What happens in this model is usually when I go into a training, I take some training. People come to Vishesh. Okay, I'm going to get trained on um, Java. Great, but what wh what is the kind of job I will get? What do I say? No, we will try for jobs. After you finish training, we will try to get you some jobs, okay? But please go, go to this training. Training is so important. The person has no choice. Nobody, no trainers are there. No companies are there. Anyway, this is pre-training. Let me join and take the training. Okay? And the end of the training, we talk to the employer. Employer say, no, we don't know. We are not ready. We only had 20, 21 graduates. We don't hire uh, 2019 graduates. I keep talking, keep talking, no one no one uh, there is no 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 taker this person has lost uh, finished two months spent time with us is moved out he does not get any job uh, the thing gets uh, lost the whole thing changes if i get that employer and tells them okay you got to see who are my trainees this is the qualification this is the year of pass out this is their percentage you can interview them you screen them and they'll go through. This is the curriculum they'll go through. In that curriculum, I'll build, you know, which is banking or Java inputs. I will build those things so that when they come and join you, ultimately, they are, you don't have to retrain them on many aspects. Huh? Uh, that's, that's how, that's how the, I, we convince the employer. Um, the, the, for the training, uh, uh, training, training, what happened? They say, okay, if I come here, and I finish this training and I get this score, I will get a job in XYZ company. That strong motivation is there. And so you, the energy that the person brings uh, to the training is completely different. The learning motivation is very, very different. And as a result, and also the person knows that this company has, for the comp has invested or given this direction, that's better sense of loyalty towards the company. So overall retention is higher and ultimately productivity is higher. So this model is called the train and hire. I'll show you one more slide to show um, a case study of how uh, specifically in, in more detail, how that uh, model. Any questions? 
of course, like Saksam said, this model can be now the train and hire is the large the, the methodology, the model of engaging the various partners, the employer, training agency, and most importantly, they can the individual with disability. All three coming together to for the employment to get a viable employment or opportunity. Okay. And then delivery, like Saksam mentioned, blended delivery model. Deliver through um, e-learning, have an academy where the person can practice, um, have an instructor to, uh, um, to deliver a training, have a support coordinator to motivate, to make sure that they are not falling behind, to take additional classes if the person falling behind. All of that uh, lead, is the delivery of, a, uh, of the training. And the end of the training, they assess and they get a job. Is it clear? Can we move ahead? I, I will cover the internship through through an example. So typically, you know, this is how the the um, the train and hire program runs through. It typically takes about 100 and 120 days from the start to identify a job. Training plan is agreed with the employer. Trainers get employed, uh, enrolled. They are under and they, before enrollment. They are screened by the employer. Uh, training is conducted conducted by the training partner, Vishesh or anyone one month, two month training, and then they go through a assessment and then they get a job offer. The trainee knows that they'll get a job offer. There is uh, only if they meet the assessment criteria and then they get onboarded. Okay. That is the case of a um, okay. Now, in case of internship, uh, internship is slightly different. It is training. But I, I, it is training not after the person gets the job because when the person gets the job is all not sorry after the person graduates because after getting, getting graduate the person is is very um, you know uh, restless I want a job I want a job but if I go to the college I'm able to ca uh, have the person much earlier you know so here again it's the same model but I go into the college and uh, work with the identify the partner college and partner employer who is supporting the uh, such a program. They pre-select the, the, the interns. Um, during the gap period, we are able to address English language or JAWS or any such very advanced Excel, uh, any foundational program we will address. We select the person in the second year, during the third year, we do a boot camp, one year boot camp, many small, small modules so that the trainer trainee gets full, full uh, um, understanding then goes the trainer and the employer is also coming only for internship it's not a job so the employer is pretty much fine to take up and uh, and in the internship the person is able to demonstrate the skill more likely to get uh, employment offers so this this model helps in in um, dis disabilities where the employer is still not very ready you know we have we place people with learning disabilities dyslexia autism through this model we said internship but you, uh, we very clearly tell the employer, this is, a, you please take this as a job. Your internship is also like a full-time job. It is not to give the person a certificate. If the person does not need it, training certificates anymore. The person really needs a job. If you are serious about the job, please look at that individual. And then the, that's how the internships are modeled. And the end of the, based on the performance in the internship, job offers uh, are rolled out. And now these were all white collar examples, no? So uh, I will, as a, I'll stop here. Any questions up to this stage? Sir, in the first model, hmm. uh, where the training would be done by the company itself. Okay. So are we not limiting the options of the student to a certain extent because it's a single company or is the training provided for multiple companies? Training provided for single company or training provided for a collective of companies. Like okay. NAS, suppose Sector Skill Council, NASCOM. NASCOM is a collective of IIT, IT companies. Huh? So they will give three or four companies and um, uh, uh, the skills, entry level skill in IT, just for an example, Accenture, TCS, Cognizant, all of them are same, you know, it is the same. So. I, we, and we agree, agree with them that these five, six companies are uh, the ones who are um, uh, coming to trade. Yes, your question is right. We may limit the person's choice to one company or two companies, huh? but the company is investing here in the training. Huh? 
okay the company is paying for the training and etc etc and no and it is not necessary and okay the person gets on the first opportunity to interview there but if the person is um, gets the skill if there's no bond uh, etc that the person has to go only to that company and the training also next question is training is also uh, 70 to 80 percent generic only 10 20 percent specific so it will be a training on if i say language you know programming just as an example i will train a person for full stack java but uh, if that environment is of certain database react js whatever mongodb something those database training will be smaller only 10 20 percent it is still uh, significantly um, a portable skill on which the, the the person will be trained make sense yes sir so you in a way you are right if i train only very narrow the training should not be so narrow that the person is getting only one company one job they cannot uh, that is not skill huh? so that is not skill so the skill has to be uh, skill has to be uh, um, I mean, for example, you take a very, very simple example. Uh, if uh, a skill, if I if I have to work in a hospitality sector, in a hotel, if I'm cutting vegetable, if there's some angle at which it's cut, um, if this hotel wants a certain angle, if cut, learning the person to cut at that angle is not skill, that is only for that job. But how to cut, how to take a knife, what is the sharp part of a knife, how to peel the vegetable, how to make the first cut? How to uh, in a hygienic manner keep the keep the vegetable? All of that is a skill which 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 I understand the theory behind the on the whole uh, vegetable cutting um, um, uh, skill, and I can use it for any house, any 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 of the hotels. Make sense? It is just uh, only uh, what I am trying to just fix here is employer at the end gives a light um, a better motivation for the tra and the individual to train and i'm also getting the buy in of the employer to later on the employer should not say hey okay you finish the training but uh, i don't know i don't have any requirement the skin in the game is not there for the employer yeah does it address yes. your question to some extent yes yes this yeah Saksham? Yes, sir. It answers the question. Yeah, thank you. Uh, now I I talk about an example which we worked with sector sector skill council. Um, you know, so far we talked about IT job. Um, I'll spend the next five six minutes and then we will um, close the session. This is about an uh, this is people with intellectual disabilities which we worked. Um, uh, just to give you a number, we, we had a target of 17, but we actually trained 26 people, 18 in Chennai and 8 in Delhi for roles in um, kitchen helper, laundry associate, uh, retail associate, stalker and entrepreneur, it is called. These are uh, the jobs for which we, we worked with uh, people with intellectual disabilities. Okay? The approach was to train and deliver pre-training model okay the you know when we talked uh, i think puja brought this point and we discussed about it i said in case of um, uh, such kind of training blue collar there is cost of physical investment okay so if we were to train you know on a, where do i find the laundry where do i find the uh, housekeeping uh, consumables etc we have an office i have computers um, maybe i can get the trainer somehow from and and it is fine, but all of this is an investment, you know, the laundry and other things. I don't have it. Even, even if I try to simulate, it may not be what you know, industry grade in a company grade or a hospital, hospital sector, uh, hospitality sector um, quality may not be there. So uh, what to do under that, those circumstances? Okay. So, so what we try to do here is a, a tweak. You know, what we did is the model was we did pre-training. Pre-training is the person comes and we simulate the conditions and pre-training was done with a, with a partner location, an NGO partner uh, we worked with um, who from Maitri in Chennai and, uh, and Evolver in, in uh, Delhi. They already know this, this individual, some basic skill training is going on. We, we visited that thing and we said, okay, this, this is what they need. You know, hospitality means cleaning and mopping and etc. So let the person do 
uh, uh, how to handle a mop what is the type of detergents um, what is a, uh, how do you dip and how do you put the stroke so that the uh, space is clean you know uh, we gave that we got those inputs and tried to simulate in a training institution setup not real setup okay um, uh, dusting uh, things like that how very very basic skills we tried to simulate that's called pre training so that and also we gave them people an orientation of what the sector is what is importance of quality coming in time going on time how does the shift work um, uh, tra uh, traveling you know independent travel to the workplace uh, all of that was sorted you know the id card was made so that if there any any time they are delayed or uh, they are lost or how to whom should they you know because handling a phone also is a uh, is a challenge they should just have the numbers somewhere stack ask somebody to give a call at this number things like that were all all of that was addressed in the pre training and after that we did what we since we cannot invest in capital we did on the job training we we tied up with some institutions and they said okay we are fine to take them as interns so we got them on board uh, hotels uh, sarovar hotel in delhi big bazaar um, of course all over india and delhi and chennai and then grt hotel in chennai we tied them up we said we enroll them okay you you are the uh, we are going to you, they are all going to be getting this kind of a theoretical training and they're going to get some pre training from us after they finish this short one month pre training or they will be on the job uh, in your premises uh, that's the um, uh, deal that we struck okay so i'm just sh share with you some of the real challenges we we um, we faced okay one is of course like you know sourcing when we talked to the job seekers they said why should i come for this training it's another training that's where we used our work with our partner and convince the partner that we are serious about a job it's not a training just the training and get a certificate and go we are serious about getting jobs for them and then the partner convinced so working with a partner helped in um uh, solving the problem of sourcing candidates directly then parents uh, mismatch the parents think oh this is a blue collar job aspire not um, up to our dignity we are uh, we should we aspire for higher then we talk to them and moderate their expectations see your skill level is this and a job is a job if you want to take you can take but we are we are going safety security of that individual will definitely be protected plus we are talking about dignified Uh, work environment that's the uh, bas basically the parent also becomes a stakeholder in the training uh, in the training decision okay um transportation not affordable so we had to work off many methods to make it um, um, um to, so that the person can train tra and travel independently because they were they were not traveling their parents had to come and drop um, all of that was going on escort etc proving to be expensive lack of time etc so we actually worked with them to uh, get free bus passes you know from the government and and facilitated uh, initially three days the parent will come and slowly the whole independent travel um, uh, so that because coming and going to a plant or a office or a hostel or hotel is equally important to the job you know and uh, to make sure there is continuity okay then we saw huge divergence in skill base some people are verbal some are non uh, different way they respond some are um, are able to take information and execute faster so we had to really work around making sure the batch formation even even though we had a batch of 10 there were sub batches so that learners are appropriately grouped so that the trainer is able to uh, uh, pitch the program at a certain level and and be able to deliver the training okay uh, then the, training and uh, we had some challenge of the delay in uh, um the ojt coming you know festivals and diwali and these kind of challenges means the on the job training while we completed our training the uh, the hotel and uh, etc they delayed okay so then uh, similarly workplace buddy they said okay we will address and get a workplace buddy that was not assigned so we had we had our job coaches from vishesh Uh, our organization work then regular working 8 hour work was some finding they finding it difficult to stand and work for 8 hours a um, lot of reasons not that sometimes yes physical fitness could be a reason but 
um, uh, more than that, you know, they're very, most of them are very sincere. They could not, you know, when a customer is not coming or they thought, okay, my job is to stand and deliver, I have to stand and deliver. If the customer is not there, go take a break, sit somewhere, no, they never were doing that. So we, we had to, so initially say, okay, we'll start with four hours, uh, give them these cues when they can take breaks and slow, slowly and slowly at the end of the uh, internship program, they were ready for a full regular eight hour uh, work. Okay. And then, and of course, new workplace, anxiety. So a lot of counseling, uh, mind mapping on how to travel within the office. All of that was actually carried out. Okay. Um, yeah, we talked about this earlier, challenge of stamina, lack of stamina. Um, so a fitness program, a need-based work, workplace, um, you know, breaks, etc. Uh, we, it was a solution that came for that. Uh, and then employers, this, you know, nothing, everything is okay, why are you a person with disability? So that's where it started. It's so invisible, you know, intellectual disability, invisible. If you don't understand it, then we'll be, we'll be able to handle it. So okay, there was a phone in two days, that we need a little support, give the job to the job. So we, we had, and then we said, okay, that's why we said that. Then we did a sensitization session and uh, involved the parents said that, see, they can learn, they will acquire the skill, but you have to be patient. You have, this is the way you have to explain. Sometimes you have to do and explain uh, and uh, be sensitive to their needs. And then um, this would happen. So that kind of solution was placed. Okay? And we did, frankly, we, all of this led to a pretty good outcome in terms of jobs, etc. So for, these are the practices, batch formation, engage with pa partners, um, talk to the parents, um, be very, very methodical in screening. On the training, pre-training, very critical. Uh, tie up for, with on-the-job training so that you are, your capital costs are completely reduced. And you are, by doing on-the-job means you are already naturally aligned to um, what the industry is requiring. Uh, if, if you, even if you're not able to do regular working hours, start with uh, some, work, some amount of part, part working and slowly but try to gra graduate to full work hours and sensitization must at the workplace. Okay? Continuous tracking, close coordination, very, very critical to keep the momentum of the training. Okay? I'll skip this. So some of the pictures uh, of, um, of how this particular training really went well. Uh, in, uh, this is some pictures in hospitality and uh, there are some first picture is about a person in the retail sector working with uh, on uh, arranging um, way the you know cloth people the visitors come the the, the the customers come take out a cloth and put it somewhere based on the tag they have to put it back in the right place so you know, and the, the pictures show uh, how they are able to do that we, we did some small small uh, kind of adjustments so that they can do ironing and folding uh, uh, with etc these individuals could close, slowly acquire that skill some more pictures here of how mopping is happening, how the, in, in, this is in Sarovar Hotel, how the tea, how the cups are being organized, the laundry work um, uh, that is getting organized. With that, I closed the session. I, I think I've again managed to exceed by five minutes. I'm sorry for that, but I can wait, hang on. And if you have any questions, I can address that. Else I will hand it back to Asta and Dick. So can you elaborate on this idea of expectation uh, of a white collar job and uh, when they actually are offered a blue collar job? Because somewhere uh, that creates a glass ceiling also where it is not their fault that they have not been provided with those skills uh, in the initial stages. And then uh, compelling them to do those jobs, it sometimes uh, feels very unjust. So your views, comments, experiences on that. Yeah. So, you know, so, uh, um, um, so what happens is um, your aspiration, moderation of an aspiration your, your, and the existing skill and the job that is uh, 
a person can have uh, is you've got to match that. You know, if for example, I have I don't have any skill, very basic skill, but I want to be a software engineer, and I want to sit in a computer and earn, um, it is not going to happen. Okay, but yes, I'm not, not got the opportunity to learn is is fine, but currently I don't have. Okay, so what has happened is definitely happened in the past is i would say maybe from a social justice viewpoint there is there are challenges that can we can always discuss argue about but the my thoughts and comments are let's take it like this uh, let's take what you based on your current skill um, your um, um, current um, uh, uh, you know uh, competency what is available let's settle for that let's not settle for lower for sure just because you need a job, let's we can't go lower. People go lower as well. It's a choice that people have to make. But in general, if the person wants to uh, to settle for a job, let's settle for whatever is available. Okay, with that particular skill, at that particular that skill, this is the only thing which is available. Okay, so that kind of interaction, confidence building has to be made. But now, now that you get a job, means you get get uh, get access to income a steady income and that means you have the opportunity to really use that income and money and save that money to acquire additional skill to really navigate and at the first four or five years jobs are very fungible you can move from one sector to one, another sector in the first five years only after the when you get to six sixty or under eight year etc things become very very tricky okay so i know a lot of people who have moved from uh, done manual uh, bpo jobs to really a software engineer bpo is kind of calling engineer but i did never get a job kept waiting never getting not getting my software job uh, so what do i do okay take up any job which is a bpo so a lot of our trainees are from working in bpo this this so BPO is like a blue collar version for an for an IT engineer, a huh? suction. Whereas a software engineer is the real white collar job. Okay, it's a hard grunt. Go there, do this calling. It may look like working in blue collar, but you are actually calling, 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 calling uh, for for the whole day. At inbound, you know, uh, your maybe the job enrichment is limited, etc. Okay, so we, we but given the, uh, the skill is not there. If the skill is there, probably yes and. Uh, he would have got, but and also the employers are not ready. So take it up, and then when you uh, take up, build your skills, learn programming, um, build your portfolio, show show about your skills, um, your, your do your coding skills. Then he learn. Some of them have many of them come learn the program, and, and then we are able to present them. We advocate to companies. Okay, please forget about their year of passing. Look at the skill. If they pass your coding test, give them the job. So. That's uh, my view, uh, take on it, uh, Saksham. So there is, past is, a, of course, a matter of debate and et cetera. I would not want to um, really discount that. Yes, there's work to be done by the ecosystem. But looking at that individual, it is not, it's not going to help the individual to uh, look at the past. For that individual, the movement of reality, movement of uh, income is critical. And then the, and the hope that the person, if the person applies uh, after the first job, Upward mobility is much, much higher. Saksham? Yes, sir. It's a very practical to the point solution um, because it might be a long term process where you have to change all the structural and institutional barriers. Yes. So, as on basis, whatever we can provide. We provide yes. that training. Yeah, absolutely. This, if this you are talking to a training provider, I'm a counselor. This is what I will say. But from a, uh, if you are talking to a to a policymaker, a person who is in uh, in the ministry, I will have a different say. I will to uh, to radically transform our education system. Uh, the, uh, the 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 outlook, the perception of uh, a TVET system. I have to say that TVET or a person who is blue collar is, is the one who is engine of our economy. I have to ensure their compensation is higher. Um, you know, there's pride in their in their jobs, in the job as well. A, a person who starts in that role uh, from a TVET track 
can also do do designing and become you know senior designer and go on to acquiring very very high positions in in companies so that's that's the track that i will plan if i were a policy maker or an educationist or a, or in the ministry okay there are two uh, responses uh, to you section thank you sir if there are no more questions uh, we i'll hand over back to asta asta back to you yes yes sir thank you sir for the two wonderful lectures uh, they were highly informative and i'm sure we all benefit from them a lot yeah so if uh, nobody else has any questions i guess we can end the session thank you so much thanks everyone for the active participation and active listening and for bearing me out for the for, bo for both the sessions wishing you all very good in this course and in your career as well thank you so much sir